Hello and welcome to our video series about the new high-end GNSS simulation capabilities of the Roden Schwartz SMW200A. In this episode, we'll see how easy it is to work with the instrument and set up your testing scenarios. Now before we get into looking at some of the detailed instrument settings, let's just start with some general remarks on how you can work with the instrument. First of all, you do not need an, to use an external computer to configure and operate the instrument. The SMW has an integrated GUI that allows you to generate GNSS scenarios quickly and easily. There are four different ways to interact with the instrument. First, the instrument can be configured manually using its large touchscreen and the buttons on the side. If you'd like, instead of making use of the touch interface, you could also connect a mouse and keyboard to the SMW. In case you want to configure the instrument from a remote PC, you can use a VNC client to duplicate the instrument GUI on your PC and even emulate the buttons. Of course, anything done manually can be fully automated using Skippy commands. A script could be written from scratch or using the Skippy recorder functionality. Now let's have a closer look at how GNSS scenarios can be configured using the GUI. We start by turning the SMW into a GNSS simulator. This can be done by changing the instrument's base configuration from standard to GNSS advanced. This is useful for those who only want to use GNSS signals and changes the user interface to focus on this. In this instrument mode, you can configure up to four so-called GNSS streams in the GNSS block on the left. Each stream can represent different signals coming from different frequency bands, signals that will be received by different antennas, signals generated for different vehicles or platforms, or a combination of any of these things. In the second block on the right, you can add noise or CW interfere to the GNSS streams, either individually per stream or to all the streams. The GNSS scenario settings are done in the GNSS block, and this is what we'll look at next. So this is the starting user interface for configuring a GNSS scenario. You can save or load your own scenarios or select a scenario from a list of pre-configured simulations. The SMW supports two different test modes. The navigation test mode is used whenever the positioning and navigation features of a device are to be tested. For example, the time to first fix of a receiver. In this mode, the SMW simulates a realistic GNSS constellation that's changing over time. In the tracking test mode, only the tracking features of a device can be tested. This mode does not provide a moving constellation simulation. It basically simulates static GNSS channels and is typically used in the early stages of receiver development or for GNSS production testing. Here on the left, there are buttons to give you access to all configuration parameters you need to set up your scenario, to monitor simulation parameters while the scenario is running, and to generate logging data for post-processing purposes. When we go into the simulation configuration section, we see that all the configuration options are grouped into different topics represented by this tab structure. In the system and signals tab, you can activate the different GNSS and augmentation systems that you'd like to simulate. The time tab contains configuration parameters to set the simulation time and to configure leap second events. Under Receiver, there are configuration options to model the receiver environment. This could be the simulated position, trajectories, antenna characteristics, and multipath signals. In the Satellites section, you can switch individual signals on or off, control the signal power levels, configure the navigation message content, and apply system errors like orbit, clock, or pseudorange errors. The Atmosphere tab allows to configure ionospheric and tropospheric models. And last, the Output Streams tab lets you route your GNSS streams to up to four RF outputs. In this case, I'll just use all the defaults and turn the simulation on. Once it's running, you can keep track of what's happening by pressing the Simulation Monitor button. And as you can still make some modifications on the fly, can easily switch back and forth between the configurations view and the monitoring view. So this concludes our short user interface tour. 
In the next videos, we'll go a little deeper into specific GNSS scenarios, and you'll get a better idea of what the SMW is able to do. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.